Hey everybody, welcome back, Falcon, Neil Scavenger. Since I forgot what I was doing last time, because it's been a while, I had to look it up, and I think the last thing we did, well, I looked up the video, and we were to the, we were in the bank, and we got the information, and that told us to head over to the Concrete Forest Apartments to find one K.O. McAllen, if I'm right. So we're gonna be doing that. Let's come down over here. Arriving at the Concrete Forest Apartments, you immediately see the resemblance. Towering structures stand at regular intervals like giant artificial trees. Crisscrossing laundry lines, string lights, and contra code balcony modifications complete the illusion. Below the ground is an organic patchwork of community gardens and trash heaps. A gutted husk of cars and playgrounds, those who call the forest home and those who sleep in its shadow. It feels a bit like a street fair collided with a refugee camp in the ghetto. I know all about the ghetto dog, that's where I grew up, that's why I'm so hard. Why do you think I say dog all the time? <laughs> yeah, it's not really true. I'm not, I'm, I grew up in the ghetto, but I'm not hard whatsoever. I ran away anytime there was something going on. And that's fine, because hey, I'm still alive, right? <laughs> I barely. Alright, you step into the black and start... You step into the black? Hooey. Ghetto and now this? Falcon, what's going on? I'm sorry. You step into the block and start looking around. Don't bring that up again. I assure you that was just a slip of the tongue that was a complete innocent mistake. There's a canteen truck strategically positioned curbside near the man, the main walk. People are lined up at the illuminated, illuminated side window, and a mixture of steam and smoke stream from its openings. Nearby, music booms from where a crowd has gathered. It's all bobbing shoulders and legs from here, but you do see a car's hutch, hatchback sticking up from the near of the center. One of the towers has a sea store at ground level. A, love, a lonely few are inside, but it doesn't seem very popular. And there's the ubiquitous knockoff vendor barking at passerby. So, we have a few options here. Uh, we could check out the canteen truck. 48 bucks is what it's gonna cost us, but we're already, you know, pretty much sated, so I don't think we even need that. We could check out the sea store, and then we could check out the crowd. I wanna check out the crowd. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had to tower 48. Well, remember, we're looking for K.O. McGowan. So, let's first and foremost check out the sea store, see what they have for sale, and then we'll, we'll continue going further into our quest here. In major towers like this, you often find a convenience store on ground level. Like one would find at a gas station. It's filled with things that work in an emergency, but nothing for which you'd dedicate a visit. The crab space is filled with bottled drinks, junk food, and over-the-counter drugs and impulse buys. Uh, let's start shopping over here. See what they have. Alrighty, see here. So, we have... What is that, 826 bucks? Or is that 600? It looks like 800 to me. I always have a hard time telling that apart. Um, there's some alcohol here, 241, but it's not really useful unless we're trying to take care of our cuts, so I'm gonna bypass that. There are a few lighters, but we have lighters of our own, so we don't really need that. Is there anything I really want to sell right now? I don't think there is. I think I might have sold everything that I wanted to back at the, um, black market. So at this point, it's just a matter of buying things for ourselves. Um, let's see, what is in our vehicle here? Eh, so I have some cooked meat over here. I have a pistol. Am I holding on that, or do I want to sell that? That's not even loaded, is it? I guess I'm holding on to it, right? Yeah, I guess I am. Alright, we'll hold on to that pistol just in case, even though I'm not a really a ranged class, but whatever. Um, let's see. We could buy some food. Have some emergency backup food over here. Um, like some soup in a can. Five bucks each isn't really too bad. And the upside is that the leftover can can be used as a trap for us, even though we do have a few traps right now. Uh, let's see here. Do I want to buy anything? Five bucks for some soup. I don't think that's a bad investment, to be honest with you, so sure. Let me get this, and let me get this. Just in case I'm hungry on the fly and I can't find an animal to kill, we just have some soup, and hopefully that'll be alright. I'm not too crazy about how long, how much space it takes up, but, you know, we'll, we'll get around that at some point. And then we have some gummy bears. They really don't do much for us. That's about it, I'm going to say, right? I don't need to buy pure water. I can purify water easily. And these are just painkillers. We don't have any painkillers. Now, that's something that could be beneficial for us because I don't see any sort... I mean, we have the bear root. But we don't have any sort of medication in case we get injured out there. Um, I mean, I would like to buy some. It's just... um, I don't want to fucking buy 20 of them. That seems like you're a little bit fucking excessive now, doesn't it? <laughs> like, do you have the small, like, traveler's variety? You know, like, you know, three in a packet? I'd buy three, but, you know, 20. It's 101 bucks, man. Should I do this? No, I'm going to have to hold off. I can't do that. I mean, of course, I'm going to injure myself later. I'm going to hope I had them, but, you know, so be it. Alrighty, so I think we're done over here. Just bought some soup. Alrighty, confirm. Now, let's come back over here. Let's check out the crowd, and then we'll come inside of the apartments, or Tower 48 anyway. 
The sidewalk is vibrating with bass as you approach. It's all about the bass. The bass. The bass. Not about the tre treble? No? Alrighty, whatever. And the scene begins to make a bit more sense. A wide-body metallic red hatchback is parked near the center. Its doors and hatch wide open to expose an array of lights, speakers, and subs. You can almost feel the air move in time with the beat. Meanwhile, b-boys are taking turns. By the way, if you guys don't know what b-boys are, they're brick boys. They kind of do brick dancing moves and things of that nature. How do I know that? You know, maybe back in my old heyday, I was kind of a b-boy myself. <laughs> yeah, I really wasn't. Uh, mixing moves and styles, both familiar and strange, it astounds you how the human body can do these things, how humans still push the boundaries of art from older than you can imagine. The high, positive energy feels so foreign after days in the wild, everything out there seems to be forgotten in its hot bath of sound and energy. You stick around a few more moments and soaking up the raw culture, then turn back at the matters at hand. Alright, so nothing was right there. Let's go into Tower 48 then. Judging by the signature, Tower 48 is a few rows south of here. You strive off in that direction, weaving your way through the complex network of buildings, people, and detritus. Deep in the center of the block, you find number 48. The thing is easily 40 stories high, and like all the towers here, has an X-shaped cross-section. Also, like all the other towers, there is a secure entryway. Some sort of card lock, likely to keep troublemakers like you out. And judging by the dents and marks all over the frame and glass, it's done its job handily over the years. So. Here we are in Tower 48. We could use the intercom. We could wait for somebody to use the door. Um, we could try trapping with jams the main door. Or we could try mechanic. Well, I guess they both do the same thing, huh? And look for another way in. Now, this is interesting because I've never done this before. So, I, I'm not entirely sure what the um, protocol here is going to be. So, um, I guess um, I'm going to use the mechanic. It sounds a little bit more reasonable for the situation. I'm not sure how trapping is going to really work out. So, I will try mechanic and see what happens over here. Looks like you could probably jam the main motorized door in order to force folks to prop open the overflow door. Even if they call maintenance, they'll likely keep the doors open while working on them. Alrighty, sounds good. Finding a suitably small, hard piece of junk, you cram it into the main door jam. Jam? Jam? Jam on! You jam at the door! Either way, out of sight. Then you take out the position nearby so as to avoid suspicion. A few minutes later, the first victim arrives from outside and you hear the bzzz, followed by a straining hum. He flicks his card again, emitting another bzzz, but no luck. There are a few acrobatic attempts to activate the card lock while yanking on the door, but he only succeeds in tiring himself out. From inside, another tenant appears. She too is failed by the door, and no combo of pushing and shoulder checking seems to help. Both tenants uh, share silent, sympathetic ex exasperation through the glass as you think to yourself, come on already. There are a few more half-hearted attempts and then she starts looking around the second door. That's it, you mutter to yourself. She reaches down to where the door meets the ground and works to uh, stubborn latch loose. Then she pushes the second door open, dropping its foot to keep it open. They share a genuine laugh over the spectacle. They continue on their way. You cross through the door and step out inside without missing a beat. Alright, so we're inside now. Inside, it's pretty spartan. Industrial strength carpeting and tile, the same ugly lavender paint. Good to see the anti-ballistic fake wood paneling industry is still in business too. The elevator bank is pretty impressive though, probably has to be with many people here. You step into an elevator and punch the button floor 39. Dented metal doors slide closed and you feel the car accelerate. The ride is several minutes of humming, creaking, and an annoying uh, synthetic ding. You hear occasional voices and music as you pass some floors, but it's a long, boring ride. It smells like stale fried food too. Sounds like amazing smell to be honest with you. I mean, you're in the apocalyptic world here, man. <laughs> I don't think you have the luxury of fried food too often. Alrighty, when you finally arrive on the 39th floor, the doors open to muffled, echoing TVs, music, and voices of those down the long hall. You turn right and make your way to the Kale's room. There doesn't seem to be any sound from within, but it's hard to be sure in this noise. You're on floor 39, outside Kale's apartment. Alrighty, so we have a few options here. We can leave the building. Seems kind of really pointless. I could knock on Kale's door. I could be tough and bust his door open, or I could just bust his door open with the crowbar. Well, um, I don't think knocking should probably be the one, right? <laughs> I mean, I want to. I, I do want to talk to this guy. I'm not sure if he's a bad dude or not. Um, but these options over here sounds like I'm gonna make a lot of noise and then probably draw attention to myself. Let me knock on his door and see what happens. You knock several times, but there's no answer. It must be out. Okay. So if he's out, then maybe I can bust the door open then. So he uses the crowbar. You don't have to, any time for subtlety or politeness. Crack. The door swings open, shredded molding where the latch used to be. You step through, hoping that noise wasn't as loud as you thought. With the door closing behind you, pale aquarium lights cast a glow on everything. You flick an overhead switch and find yourself in a veritable shrine to mer people, posters, statuettes, seashells, and other paraphernalia crowd, the studio apartment. Uh, one could almost make it for a gift shop, weird not for the unmade bed and other personal effects. 
There's also an old spare wheelchair in here, stacks of skin, skin cream, and some sort of caterer device? Oh, God. Then you spot it, peeking out from another picture's frame, a photograph of someone pushing you in a wheelchair. The young man pushing you looks vaguely familiar, and in some way, and, and is the same one in many of the photos on the shelf. You can't remember who, though. The building looks familiar, too. Saginaw Mental Institution reads a nearby sign in the photo. Okay. Saginaw? What were you doing up there? And were you on your way in or out? The idea of mental institution in your past shakes your confidence a bit. Your thoughts are interrupted, however, by the door opening. Uh-oh, here we go. In the hall, you see a man with a phone in his ear, and a murmur of commotion from further away. It looks like your expert burglary skills stirred up some attention. And judging by the part of that cell phone conversation, you can hear the party's just getting started. Better get a move on. You push back through the doorways past the gathering crowd and hit the elevator call. The elevator ride is unnerving. Dozens of floors go by slowly, and you wonder how much time you have before Sky Corpse arrives. Surely they're busy. It'll take a while, and by then, Kale's neighbors will have seen there's no point. They've probably canceled the call by now. The door slide open. You step into the empty lobby. Okay. Oh, God. Sirens blare suddenly in the street in a high, warbling burst. Blue and red strobes light up the area as fan jets um, scatter moisture and debris around. A loudspeaker booms across a nearby building of facades. This is Sky Corps Security. Step into the street and place your hands on top of your head. Oh, fuck me. Well then, that was a good run. <laughs> and this is the guess where it's gonna end. Uh, do I comply? Mechanic, see what I'm up against, and then run away from the sky bike. Uh, I guess we'll go mechanic, see what I'm up against. You take a moment to peer outside at the source of the noise. Hovering some 10 meters above is a sky bike, bristling with lights, exhaust, noises, nasals, and a semi enclosed rider atop. Uh, more concerning is that nasty looking turret on the undercarriage. It looks like one part sensor sweet and one or more parts of muzzle. It's aimed in your general area, but looks like to be in some sort of pending acquisition mode. The thing no doubt tag you if you ran, but it might have some trouble with traversing tracking if you move fast enough crossing underneath it. You'd have to be damn fast though. I don't think I have, um... <laughs> I don't think I have athletic right now, that would probably be helpful. Run underneath the sky bike. I'd have to be damn fast, it said. This might be the end of the run. Let's try it out. You steal your nerves and bolt charging directly under the sky bike. A flashing of red emits from its undercarriage and your body is painted in a flickering crosshatch pattern. You hear the engines change pitch as the vehicle reorients a beep followed by a loud pow. Something smacks against the ground near your feet, flashing arcs of electricity as it skitters. Dodging down a side street, you hear the engines wearing behind you enter a steady crescendo. You caught the jockey unaware, but this chase is going to be over pretty quick if you don't upgrade your strategy from outrun to high performance flying motorcycle. Okay, I mean, we're still alive, but Jesus Christ, we have to make the right calls now. Do I merge with the ground? Do I duck into a building? Use, an, use other ground and hover traffic as cover? Or duck into an alley? <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know, man. I'm at a loss right now, so... Use other ground and hover traffic as cover. Um, I guess merging with the crowd would seem like a good idea, right? Duck into a building. Yeah, I'm going to try merging with the crowd and see what happens here. People on the sidewalk here are thick enough that you could probably make yourself a risky target if you weave through them. Dashing towards the sidewalk, you begin bobbing and weaving through the sky bikes, filtering red target hash marks follow you. You do your best to present as few clear shots as possible, shoulder brushing one person sidestepping to the next. You manage to buy yourself a few more moments, but that's thing... But that thing's far from shaken off. In fact, it seems to have an unshakable beat on you, no matter what you do, even tracking you through obstacles. The Sky Corps bike continues its vigil, targeting turret, twitching for the right spot. Excuse me? Check for tracking device. I have a tracking device! Oh, well, that's probably it then. Um, Yeah, I guess I'll check for tracking device. The thing's gotta be tracking you somehow. Check your things to see if there's something giving your position away. Um, What could it be? Well, I mean, it's gotta be the bracelet, right? Wouldn't have to be the bracelet? Oh, I don't want to get rid of this thing, though. It's a lot of money. I'd have to buy another one, man. Unless, um, Hatter can give me another one. I'm not sure if he can, but... This has to be the one, right? Do I destroy that? How, do, how does this work? Yeah, I mean... It's gotta be this. It's gotta be that. But then I won't be able to get back inside the fucking, um... Building itself. Or, I mean, get inside of, um, Detroit City. I'd have to probably, maybe, maybe with Hatter, maybe Hatter could help me out, I'm not sure. I guess we have to destroy this, right? I mean, that's the only way. Destroy, oh, this is gonna hurt. If I'm wrong on this, I apologize. I'm only here trying to use some common sense with this whole fucking mission I've never done before. Destroy. Okay. I'm gonna feel like quite the fool. 
The Skycore bike continues his vigil, targeting turret twitching for the right spots. And now, what do I do? Duck into an alley. Let me go back into merge with the crowd and hopefully... Okay, right. You managed to buy yourself a few more ones, but that's things far from shaking off. Um, excuse me, I just destroyed the thing. Duck into a building. Uh, let me duck into a building, I guess. Scanning for doorways, there's at least one greasy spoon you could see entering with no fuzz. Maybe they'll, they have a back door. You dash inside, pushing past the line of annoyed patrons, then set to an interior glass doors. You press through and end in a mall-like corridor, lined up with stores and doors emptying onto the other side of the block. Quickly gauging which way the sky bike will guess, you choose the opposite. You manage to buy yourself a few more moments, but that's things far from shaking off. Oh, come on. Come the fuck on. Um... Dug into an alley? I feel like going into an alley is basically just killing myself, right? Use other ground and hover traffic as cover. I guess I'll use that one now. It's not bumper to bumper, but there's a fair number of vehicles on its street. Most are at ground level, though enough sky traffic at the sky bike's altitude means that it won't have free movement. You cross at an empty, an opportune moment, putting a stream of hover traffic between you and the sky bike, forcing it into a high arc to regain a shot. You risk a brief glance to see what the bike's doing now. Its targeting system has switched back to acquisition mode, and it's clear the jockey's lost eyes on. It continues to hover in a futile vigil, awaiting backup to flood the streets, but you've gone before they arrive. Oh god, we did it! Oh my fucking god, we got out of there! Oh my fucking lord. Alrighty, well... That was... Annoying as all fuck. But here's the thing now, we, we have no way to get back in DMC, so the moment we leave, it's it, it's over. What do I do now? Do I go back? We never even met Gail McAllen. How do I meet this motherfucker then? Oh, come on, game. Let's see, what other options do we have here? I mean, we have the Concrete Forest, we have Haggerty Clinic, the Red Gnome, and Gate 11. Oh, boy. Do we go back and, like, maybe Kale's there now after this whole long chase? I don't know, man. I mean, how am I going to see this guy? Where do I run into him? Yeah, I mean, we, we got to go back, right? If, if there's danger, it'll probably tell me, too, right? Uh, let's see. So we've already read this before. We read this. Um, oh shit. Uh oh. Oh no, not this again. Not not this shit again. Okay, wait a minute. Um. Okay. Merge with the crowd. I don't even have the tracking thing anymore. I I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure that I can. Okay, come on. Maybe if I use the same things, I'll get out of here. Uh, duck into a building. I did that last time as well. Okay, we we're free. Okay, so, um, yeah, we can't go back. Don't don't ever go back, Falcon. <laughs> this is like the anti-loss, you know. We gotta go back. No, you gotta never come back. Alrighty, well, fuck. That's it. Uh, the, the dream is over. Gotta go to get out of here. Gate 11. Gotta get out of here. Alrighty, so we have, we have to go talk to Hatter, right? Maybe Hatter could give me another uh, thing over here. I'm not sure. I'm a wanted man, apparently. Oh, God. Okay, well. We, we tried our best there, I mean. <laughs> Did I do the right option? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see about Hatter, though. Consumed to re-enter Hatter's office. I need to talk to this man. See what he has to say to me here. You cross the muddy streets towards the old flop house and see if Hatter is available. Hatter's guard informs you that Hatter's on an important business right now and won't be back until tomorrow. Okay, well, he's not here today. Last Chance Canteen? Let's go check this out over here. What's in the Last Chance Canteen? Consumed his bag to enter the last... Oh, this is just for food, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't really need food right now. I mean, you'd imagine I would after all that running, but I don't. Alrighty, well... I guess we gotta give Hatter a day. And... If we have to rebuy that bracelet, it's gonna take us a little bit of money. So we're gonna have to start doing some fancy maneuvering and some questing, and that's fine. I like that. Might die from it, but I, I like it. So we're going to call it an episode here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That was a hectic one for sure. Um, leave a thumbs up. Leave a like. The support does mean a lot. Keep leaving me your tips. Keep leaving me your advice. Let me know if you want to see more. And again, your support is always a continuation of the series, so be sure to let that be known. Other than that, I will catch you next time.